Professor Robert Kingsford Adabo. Professor, <laughs> professor Robert Kingsford Adabo is an associate professor of chemistry and the acting dean School of Physical and Mathematical Sciences at the University of Ghana, Lagos. He obtained his PhD in chemistry from the Ukayama University, Ukayama City, Japan. His research focus is on drug screening studies, organic solar cell research, structural studies of bioactive compounds by the use of X-ray diffraction and environmental monitoring. He has several scientific publications in peer-reviewed journals. He has won prestigious awards from international institutions, including the Japanese Mobusho Scholarship for Masters and PhD in Chemistry, He's a fellow of the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation, George Foster Edition, Association of Educational and International Exchange of Japan, and the Japan Society for the Promotion of Sciences, Ukayama University. Professor Kingsford Adabo held a number of postdoctoral positions. He was a visiting scholar at the Department of Pure and Applied Chemistry, Strathclyde University, Glasgow, Scotland. He also undertook postdoctoral work at the Association of Educational and International Exchange of Japan, Okayama University, Japan, and the Japan Society for the Promotion of Science, Okayama University. He was a recipient of the Humboldt Postdoctoral Fellowship from the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation at the Free University of Berlin. He also won funding grants for investigator-led projects. In 2008, he was a reviewer of the Journal of Structural Chemistry, Springer, U.S. He is currently a reviewer of the Ghana Journal of Science and the Journal of Structural Chemistry. He is a member of the editorial board of the Journal of Pharma Pharmaceutical Research and Drug Design. Professor Kinsoladabo was a member of the Search and Assessment Team of the Two First Millennium Talent Awards to award exceptionally deserving scientists the country in 2015. He's also the chairman of the ASEAN Institute Educational Trust Fund. He's a member of the Ghana Science Association. In 2014, he served as chairman of the committee set up by the National Accreditation Board to review the chemistry program of the University of Energy and Renewable Resources. He was a member of the American Crystallo Crystallographic Association and also the Dutch Crystallographic Association, DGK Germany, the, German, the Japan Chemical Society, and the Japan Crystallographic Association. He is currently a member of the Ghana Chemical Society and the Ghana Science Association. Professor Kingsford Adabo is the newly appointed chairman of the board of the Council for Scientific Industrial Research, Ghana, CSIR. So audience, our chairman, Professor Adamo, your audience. Good afternoon. I didn't know it was going to be very lengthy introduction to progress as you cut. Thank you, uh, Professor Sapon. I think that the purpose for which we are here has been spelled out by Mr. Bidu, the college secretary. It's my similar honor to introduce the speaker or the presenter for today's interfaculty talk, Professor Ufusu Bui. He's a short profile. Godfrey Papena Ufusu Bui is an associate professor and head of the Forest and the Horticultural Crop Research Center. For Okumeni Niakidi of the School of Agriculture, College of Basic and Applied Sciences, University of Ghana, Lego. He obtained his BSc degree in agriculture from the University of Ghana. 
He also obtained his MSc and PhD degrees from Hiroshima University in Japan. Under the prestigious Mombushu Scholarship, Professor Ofusu Buddha joined the university as a research fellow and was promoted to the position of senior research fellow and is now an associate professor in agronomy. He teaches various courses in perennial tree crops, that is rubber, oil palm, cocoa, and citrus at both undergraduate and graduate levels. He is one of the leading scientists on citrus and rubber in Ghana and has served as consultant to the World Bank, FAO, and International Institute of Tropical Agriculture in Ghana and Liberia. Professor Budu has also served and continues to serve on several University of Ghana boards, committees, including the University Academic Board and Academic Board of the College of Basic and Applied Sciences. He is also the national coordinator of the Ghana Compost Project and All for Soil Project, co-researcher of the Pro Eco Organic Agricultural Project, all projects funded by the Swiss National Research Fund. Ladies and gentlemen, details of his profile can be found on the program brochure that has been handed to, to you. Please, with a hand of applause, let's welcome Professor Godfrey Fusu Good. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And good afternoon to you all. The topic for my presentation this afternoon, as stated, is trying to present to you my work on turning organic waste into wealth in agricultural production in Ghana. Uh, many of you might not know uh, where I work. Uh, since it's a little bit far removed from the main campus. Um, although my background is mainly in the plant sciences, that's crop physiology, for time I grew interest in uh, recycling of organic waste because I saw that it's a very, very important area which has been neglected in the country. And this work started some time back, about 15 years ago. So briefly, the Forest and Horticultural Crop Research Center is in the eastern region of Ghana, and it is near a place called Okumeni. The land was given to the university in 1957 to use it in training university students in tree crops and other horticultural crops. And it is part of the School of Agriculture, University of Ghana. So this brief introduction, I'd like to continue my presentation. The outline of my presentation is that uh, I'd like to give you background to the volumes of organic trees that are generated in the country, mainly agricultural waste, municipal and fecal sludges that are generated in large volumes. Then the challenges facing municipal authorities in trying to address these challenges. And also, knowing of the fact that a high percentage of this waste contains uh, organic matter, it means that it can be recycled into usable forms for crop production. Then it is very important for us to find markets or usable ways of the product that has been developed. So I'll also try and uh, give you a background on how me and my team have developed materials that can be used in transplant production and also adding value to this. So in doing so, we are conscious of the fact that vegetable production is very, very important to the country and we have been importing from neighboring countries. So how could we use 
these materials in producing vegetables and also tree crops. So in all these things, you realize that we can create jobs and create wealth. So this short story outline, this is how I'm going to present, this is the presentation outline. I'll give you an overview of organic waste generated in Ghana and the current management practices. The value addition to this waste and the business and research opportunities. And I'll end up with conclusion and acknowledgement of the team that we have been working with. Mr. So Chairman, organic waste generation in Ghana, for today's presentation, I'm classifying them into agricultural, municipal, solid waste, and the three tasks are. Mr. Chairman, um, based on what or where I'll be working, most of the presentation will be on the agricultural solid waste or agricultural waste management. However, I'm quite sure of the fact that municipal solid waste also is featuring prominently in Ghana. And some of my students and colleagues have also, we are also work on municipal solid waste in collaboration with International Water Management Institute, we uh, so some of my students have worked on municipal solid waste and bigger stuff. So basically, I work now waste can be found as products of farm activities and crop residues. In this presentation, I will be giving more emphasis on cuckoo, pot husk, and empty fruit batch. In addition, I work now waste and more of things like pig. Cow dung, poultry droppings, they are all can be classified as animal waste. And also, processing of fruits like citrus, palm oil. So, citrus pinora, if we have a pinora in Azamakese, and the palm oil at Bob, North Palm, and Top, they are all generating agricultural waste. So, municipal solid waste can be also described as being generated by household, commercial entities, and industrial sectors. And this constitutes like a major component from market waste, cardboard, newspapers, bottles, and all those things are all part of the source of waste. Then the human physics and urine will be classified as a fecal slag. My attention has not been given to fecal slag management, but of late because of the challenges and increasing population is becoming a very, very important area for research and management. So, Chairman, as I said earlier, the other ways are described as animal waste. But animal waste generation in Ghana is quite low because animal ready in Ghana has not received the adequate support. So much of the animal waste generated is from crop waste. So the crop waste, every fruit bank from oil palm, cocoa products from the cocoa industry, rice hash from the uh, process of the uh, paddy, corn pop, rice straw, and so that are the major agricultural waste derived from crop waste. Their food processing is just the major, as I said, they are citrus from Pidora, palm oil from Bob, North Palm, uh, Jordan oil mills. They generate a lot of palm oil mill effort, which we call pomy. And of course, cocoa bean shells from processing of chocolate. Mr. Chairman, some of us have not even seen cocoa before let alone the ports. I'd like to show you some of our students that the cocoa beans are in this pot that has been broken. And the residue which we call cocoa pot has contains a lot of nutrients, especially potassium. These are generated in large quantities in Ghana, in the forest areas where cocoa is produced. 
However, not much is used. Some of our local uh, people use it for local soup production. However, a large quantity are left or is left in the farm sets. The challenge with managing cocoa products is its discrete production areas. One need to aggregate all these materials before we can add value to it. However, it is a very good organic resource which we have to use. On the contrary, empty fruit batch are generated in large quantities either at the artisanal processing centers or the essence. Actually, the, if you take going to uh, if you take the fresh food batch to be hundred percent in terms of weight, the empty food batch forms twenty one percent. So large volumes of empty food batch are generated at the various artisanal sites and also at the essence processing centers. So chairman at the external site, these workers generate a lot of palm oil mill effects that are not properly managed. And this is a major concern to the industry since it pollutes the environment and results in killing a lot of vegetation, including oil palm itself. It contains a lot of nutrients and there's a high biological oxygen demand and also a high chemical oxygen demand. So if you don't manage it properly, it can cause a lot of environmental challenges. The chairman, there's another area where we call it improved artisanal production centers. In these areas, the processors construct tanks where the power and metal from generated are accumulated and later on collected by sucking into tanks and spread to farms. However, we don't know the actual rate of application and the point being very acidic about pH of 4 can cause huge environmental challenges. Then we have the, what the essays produce. For the essays, they have various pumps that, are anaer that promote anaerobic digestion of the organic matter. So if you go to a place like UPDC, Bob Pop, they have the response that uh, they move the pome through slides and um, within a matter of two to three months, the anaerobic digestion uh, reduces the pollutants and then the water is released to the environment. So chairman, Minister of Solid Waste in Ghana generation is estimated between 150 kilograms and 200 per capita. In Accra, approximately 760,000 tons of municipal solid waste is generated annually. And because of the high organic matter content, which is estimated to be 60% of the total waste, it means that municipal solid waste can be recycled and make use for crop production. Unfortunately, municipal solid waste in Ghana is all segregated into degradable and non-degradable fractions. So it makes high cost in this collection and management. 
And as I said earlier on, because of the high percentage of the organic matter content of the mixed solid waste, is an indication that it can be used for the production of compost and biochar, which are very, very important in replenishing the soil productivity in the country. Mr. Chairman, the municipal soil waste management is a challenge. These slides show the real situation in our cities. You see that out of a considerable fraction of the municipal soil waste generated is uncollected and they are in the middle parts of our cities and towns. These serve as breeding sites for insects and pathogens that spread cholera, diarrhea diseases to our people. So it's important we find sustainable ways of its management. The chairman, at the dark side, in the middle of our city, I don't want to make, give you the name, but it's obvious to everybody. You can see a very nice building here. And close by, we have this unmanaged waste. And because it's not properly managed, it also serves as breeding sites for insects, pests, rodents, and this also serves to spread disease in our communities. Such chairman, the next slide also shows how we treat our environment. Near the sea is also a camping site. And this obviously will go into the sea, the fish will eat, and we also will go collect the fish and continue with the cycle. <laughs> I don't want to mention certain things for us to. <laughs> But at least you can see the obvious. Then you can also see what is happening to Africa slide management. Africa slides are collected from homes and they are dumped indiscriminately. Until the advent of some of our companies like ACAP, like Ecora, who are giving value to this. I don't know where it will have been by now. It is very, very important we encourage our waste management companies because sanitation is a shared responsibility. If you don't manage our environment properly, everybody is at risk. And I dare to say that in China, they add a lot of premium to waste management. They give subsidies and promote the use of compost. And actually, when I was reviewing literature, I realized that in China, they prefer vegetables grown with fecal sludge than with inorganic fertilizers. And they even add more premium to that. So we should look at the science of whatever we are doing and throw away the myths and uh, misconceptions of a lot of things we are doing of uh, Picasso. My chairman, the current generation of Mr. Wilson's and its effects have been said earlier, but I hasten to say that in a crowd, 2,000 tons of waste, consisting of household and market waste, is generated. And out of this, 1,000 meter cube of human excreta are so generated daily. And about 65% of this municipal soil waste generated is collected to landfills, and about 35% left in the open environment. And with this high percentage, elsewhere in the UK and China, they are actually promoting the reduction in the organic matter fraction so that they will have less organic matter to fill the landfill sites. 
Because these landfill sites are becoming very, very scarce. Nobody wants landfill sites to be near his or her neighborhood. The chairman, the municipal solar grids, as I said, are about 6 million of market trees, and about 60% of them is made up of organic matter. And also, the pump system, by which I showed earlier on, because life is treated, is leading to pollution of underground water and nearby water bodies. And this 35% that are left in the cities took our gutters and heavy rainfalls. I don't want to remind you, it chokes our gutters and causes flooding and also it did the spread of disease such as cholera and diarrhea. Okay, the chairman, there are challenges and some options. We know that we should construct sanitary engineered landfills, but its maintenance is very, very expensive, let alone this construction. Then there's also increasing non availability of landfill sites because nobody wants landfill sites to be near his or her neighborhood because of the leachates. Then there's also a high transportation cost in carting municipal solid waste from various centers. If you look at the cost of haulage of waste from most of these companies, you realize that a lot of money is being spent on aggregating and hauling of municipal solid waste to the processing centers. So there's an urgent need to search for all these options of waste management. And the current economic situation, composting becomes a very sustainable, cheaper way of managing our waste, especially if we are trying to recycle the nutrients and organic matter containing the human excreta and the natural solid waste. So, gentlemen, collectively, these organic waste that I've described earlier on contain plant nutrients. For example, if you take cocoa products, it contains quite a number of electric empty food bags, EM. The carbon contains about 64%, nitrogen 1.5%, and the key phosphorus potassium is quite considerable. So, we need to recycle all this to improve our soil because the organic matter content of our soils very, very low in organic matter. That's about 0 0.72. To, but it's not, it can be as low as 0 0.4. And also, about 68% of our soils are very low in uh, nitrogen, that's less than 1%, 0.1%, available and catalan exchange capacity. So if we should recycle all these waste on goods, for me, I tell it as a resource. Then we can use it to promote the soil fertility management strategies that we want to promote. So Chairman, if you are trying to look at composting, you realize that whereas the feedstock is low in plant nutrients, the resultant compost is very rich due to the decomposition of the organic materials. So at the end of composting, a reduction of about 50% of the initial volume is achieved. So through this, nutrients are concentrated and this can be released to plants when you apply it to the soil. It can also improve the soil fertility, like the pH, add more nutrients to the soil. So nutrient content of compost far richer than the feedstocks. So chairman, it's very, very important to all of us, if you want to protect the environment in a very sustainable way, I hate to suggest that is the way all of us should be aware 
and help promote. That is, whatever we eat, we take in nutrients. And when we excrete through urine and fecal feces, we excrete the nutrients alongside. But if you don't recycle these nutrients and add it to the soil through composting, it means that we are breaking the nutrient loop. So it's important we recycle it and add it to the soil so that the soil, the plants can take these nutrients and after maturity we can go back and eat it so that the nutrient loop it's not broken. It's a experiment. This is a more sustainable way of looking at closing the neutral loop. In Ghana, we tend to break the neutral loop by not looking at the excretion. We rather bring in high price fertilizers in place of the need to. Uh, add value to our excreta. So chairman, for the sake of our students, it's important I give a brief of what composting entails. We use fresh organic materials like cocoa pot hacks, empty fruit bunch or fecal sludge or municipal solid waste. It contains a lot of carbon which the microbes like actomycetes, bacteria, fungi, in the presence of oxygen, decompose it and you get heat in the form of energy. So you realize that in composting, heat is generated. Then alongside, gases are generated, but the major gas generated is carbon dioxide. And the resultant residue is compost, which we use or what is a topic for today. So the quality of our compost is dependent upon the type of feedstock you use. Because we call it garbage in, garbage out. So if the organic materials you are using is not high in nutrients. It means that your purpose will equally be low in nutrients. It will be high in organic matter, right? But the quality in terms of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium will be low. So, chairman, the organic will use the carbon as an energy source. So, the nitrogen is also used in metabolism and reproduction. So, if the nitrogen content of the media or piece of is low, the composition is low. Similarly, if the nitrogen content is high, you create a lot of order in the environment. So it's important to manage the carbon nitrogen ratio of the piece of in order to achieve moderate decomposition and reduce power order in the environment. So we try in collaboration with uh, Pears Oil Power Plantation to recycle their waste generated. So we use the palm oil near the front, which is a, 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 a product of the industry in moisturing the empty fruit bunch. That's the feature number one. Then it's important we do regular time to promote aeration. So you see the bulldozer, that's one of the best of machines, there's a better machine. So two is trying to erase the system, and three is maturing phase, that is the heat has gone down. Then the four is the composer is mature. So you realize that the volume at one and the volume at four is about 50 percent. So it means that the nutrients have been concentrated and it's good for application to the field. 
social band equally the management of figures like used to be from the pond. And as I said earlier on, it contaminates the water bodies and the environment. So these days there's an improvement over the pond system in the watering the figures like so we have a series of sieves. And as the gradient goes down, there is um, conservation of residue that are used dry and uh, used in the uh, composting. So in this um, Tika site is becoming a very important resource. So together with municipal solid waste and food waste and whatever you find nearby, you can use that resource in composting. So in composting, the heat generated sanitizes the media, so you get lesser um, pathogen if in the, in the purpose, so it's used without much danger. As I said earlier on, garbage is garbage out, so sometimes the quality of our compost is low, so we need to add inorganic fertilizers depending on the crop and what we want to use it for. So you can so you can add inorganic fertilizer and mix it and dry it, or you can add equal high quality organic resource like poultry droppings or high quality compost and blend. So there are various ways of improving the compost, either through inorganic fertilizer blending what we call, um, people have various needs for it, fortifier and uh, end enrichment or what are the organo minerals. And you can also blend it with uh, organics. So depending on the quality of the compost, it can be used for lawn production, it can be used for horticultural production, and it can be used for tree nursery production. The chairman, let's have an overview of soils in Ghana. General soils in Ghana are very low, and because of our poor management practices, there is nutrient depletion of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium at the rate 20 to 40 kilograms per hectare per year. So, this low nutrient input, especially the nitrogen, at this rate, has become one of the major constraints to crop production and jeopardize food security. As I said earlier on, the low organic matter content of 0.72 is very, very low and we need to address it. So we need to add inorganic uh, organic fertilizers to improve the nutrient content of our cells. So the major challenges facing the country currently is the activities of illegal mining miners who are degrading our environment. The chairman, it has now become a major headache for our country trying to reclaim our lands. Either to these soils or lands were being used for cocoa, food production, and what have you. So, if we are trying to promote food production, it is very important we, we reclaim all these lands. The third, the second factor is that inappropriate agricultural activities also result in soil fertility decline, that's promoting food insecurity. So, attempts at reducing hunger in Ghana should be addressing our depleted soils. And with that, we need to intensify and diversify our land use systems, increase the use of fertilizers and organic man manure, and use of improved seeds and irrigation. The chairman, this is a worrying site. So, how do we reclaim this land for crop production? We are importing rice, plantains and what have you. So we need to reclaim these lands. 
So how do we repel these lands? So no matter the strategy you use in reclaiming these lands, there is a need to add large volumes of organic resources to bring back the fertility of our soil for food production. In our fertilizer alone, we will not do the work. We need to promote the use of organic manure or compost. So we need to use cheaper organic resources like compost so that it will not promote leaching of nutrients into the groundwater. The nutrients in compost are stabilized, unlike poultry manure or poultry droppings or carbon, where the nutrients are not very much stabilized. So use of compost will actually promote improvement of soil fertility reduce leaching and we will try and reclaim our lands. So as I said um, if we produce the compost and we don't find value for it, there will be a choke and it don't be sustainable. So we try adding value to the compost we produce through developing soilless media and evaluating these solids with their fermentable production. So, Mr. Chairman, we evaluated different media for okra, tomato, and pepper. So, we realized that the performance of different vegetable seedlings, we noted that the vegetable seedlings perform differently. And the vegetable seedlings' performance was media specific. So now, Fabric has been able to develop media for the major vegetables that are grown in Ghana. Onions, tomato, pepper, garlic. So we can put that as for business. Mr. Chairman, Coco is a major major important crop to Ghana. However, of late, our farmers have been complaining and we ourselves have experienced it that there's a high mortality rate of our siblings in the first few years of establishment. We realize that it is due to the low organic matter content of our soils. So we decided to find ways of improving the soil organic matter through the production of soilless media using compost and other organic resources. So the chairman, we are able to, this is the soil only, hmm? then through various combinations of compost and other organic resources, we will be able to produce cocoa and the soilless media. In addition to its weightless, we planted these seedlings in soil and put them under plantain plantation to simulate what we see or what the farmers do. And we saw that the performance was very, very good compared to that of soil. So the chairman, the next slide shows the performance of cocoa in different soil types that are used in producing cocoa in Ghana. So we have the cocoa food soil, we have the required soils. So we evaluated all these. We also looked at the size of the polybar. We have 5 by 5 inches by 7 inches and the 4 inches by 5 inches it is a uh, polybox. So here we tell the seven by the five by seven as large and the four by five up as small. So we can see differences in the good performances. We are also added mulch because of the climate change. You don't know when it's going to rain and the amount and its distribution. 
So we try to evaluate uh, who has electric fruit as much as. And we use one kilogram air dry weight as the quantity of mulch for the trial. The German, the results show that the group of cocoa seedlings from bigger or pink polyvax or solid media was far better than that in the small polyvax. Meaning that the higher the organic matter content in the polyvax, the better. The German, we also mulch with cocoa products and empty fruit batch. And we realized that these two organic results are very, very good than low mulch. So, it tells us that recycling of organic waste and its use in cocoa production is the way forward for the cocoa industry. The German also evaluated vegetable transplants. We identified one of the media suitable for Okuro. As I said, we developed the media for all the vegetables. So this plate one shows the performance of uh, okra in the media. Either to okra or okra, we were told that cannot be transplanted. Then the second slide shows tearing of the polypar in addition to the solid media, planted carefully planted them in the holes. The German page 4 shows okra in the field. The performance of okra in the field is very, very, very interesting. So, gradually of our team, we hope to improve upon our vegetable production using this solid media technique. The advantage of the solid media technique and the transplant production is that it's lightweight, you get uniform high density, very, very, when you plant it, you get about only about two to three percent spaces. You get uniform uniformity in growth and yield, earliness. So, we need to encourage our students and the youth to look at vegetable transplant production as a very big business. So, generally the performance of the transplants under full conditions. You see okro, pepper, and gardeners. As I said earlier on, if all added value to all these things, so irrespective of the weather, you can go into it. And I hasten to say that as well in Thailand, the created conditions where city dwellers can grow their own vegetables in their bungalows or where they are staying. So this technique, we can and we should create about five meters square where we can grow our own vegetables at our backyards using solid media technique so that you know what you are eating and how you manage it and you don't fear what you are eating from the market. The German also evaluated the compost at the Wina or trail corn and corn irrigation projects. We added a little bit of nitrogen and zinc to the compost and we observed high tearing, early tasseling, and higher yield than the recommended fertilizer rates. So the N and Z we added is just a few. It was just less than one quarter of the recommended rates. However, the yield and the performance was far, far better than the 100% recommended rate. So, the German, through the recycle of waste, we can reduce our fertilizer budget. So, the German, the next one is we try to address the issues of nematode. You know that nematode is a major pest for plantain. And earlier recommendations show that we need to pair 
or remove the roots because it contains eggs of nematodes. And after that, we need to boil at 60 degrees Celsius or thereabouts to also kill the eggs of the nematodes. So, Chairman, this technique is very, very laborious, and sometimes you get high mortality rates when you transplant the when you plant the field and there's low rainfall in the early days. So, Chairman, through the soilless technique, you've now been able to produce plantain surface free of nematodes, and there's a very high demand for products. That see the uniformity of the plantain surface and whatever quantity you need, you can supply it. So the surface are free from nematodes, and this technique ensures that at any time of the year you can get to your plantain sucker. Either two, you can only be supply a customer who wants about thousand after two or a pimp to grow. So through this technology, uh, previously to we can only get the circus between May to June, where you just go and remove some of the circus from the mother plants. However, Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to inform you that Fort Creek has developed this technology and you can get that surface at any time of the year. Again, you can carry as many circuits as possible because the media is soilless, lightweight. So, so far we've sold over 80,000 pieces and we've also trained 50 young farmers in collaboration with World Coco Foundation who came for training. So, Mr. Chairman, we sold 50,000 pieces to Golden Resources Mining Company in the Western region. Some trial of Adidomi Farm Institute, Original Farm, and Abroma Farms. Abroma Farm, the managing director is our former University Council Chairman, Dr. Tejesi. So you can see how far the university is making inroads. So currently, we sold about 80 pieces of surface to the public and we are counting. So interested people, and industry to contact for Trek. So, Chairman, we've also been in rules in trying to improve upon the oil palm production. The use of compost and biochar significantly have improved the growth of oil palm. And it's even far better, the growth is even far better than adding inorganic fertilizer to the soil without added organic resource. So Mr. Chairman, I'm trying to put across the fact that it is very, very important for us to manage our soils using organic resources such as compost, biochar, and their combination. So in this way, we can reduce significantly our fertilizer imports. Mr. Chairman, it is very, very important for us to consider Compost quality. Because the resources come from different resources or uh, places, it is important for all of us to agree on standards. Because some of the compost have, may have high percentage of inert materials, high levels of microbial population, and the nutrient content may also vary considerably. So the consumers should know what they are buying and their uh, expected effects on the crops. For example, if the nutrient content is low, it can be used for lawns and if it's high for agricultural crops. And actually there is much work that should be done in terms of research to know the application rates, whether you should apply it as a point or we should vary it or to repenetize it, a whole lot of new area for research for the university has developed. So Mr. Chairman, we need to train our youth, our university graduates in standards or 
hope this thing for them to also continue with the development of the compost industry. So, Chairman, there's certification of compost and fertilizers act in Ghana and this act 2010 act 803 and it's at Ghana Standards Authority and there's also plant declared regulation 2012 LI 2194 at the plant protection regulatory services directorate so under these sections we have registration of appliances, transport, travel of appliances, warehouse and storage of appliances, packages and labels. So, as a nation, and we are trying to develop the purpose industry, we get caught. Labeling and packaging becomes very important. All these areas are areas for our young guys to study, create jobs, and add wealth to their pockets. So the standard method, standardization method should include germination test, which is very simple. You take extracts of the compost and compare it to that of the still water. And I suggested the use of uh, tomato because it's very, very early in germination. So we use this technique and come up with a very sensitive method for uh, germination test for composting. So another method is trying to use the carbon dioxide evolution technique, which is an index of microbial activity. So during early composting, the microbial activity is very high, but as the compost matures, it gets low. So if after tending, there's low temperature buildup or generation, and if also after tending, the carbon dioxide doesn't increase. It's an indication of compost maturity. Then you go to the other steps. So the chairman, these are all new areas where we need our youth to be aware. So this is how we compare the uh, generation test of the still water. So the chairman, we realize the development of plant plants as a business for our cocoa industry and also our oil palm industry and all the tree crops. It's a very new area, so together with the beta oil transplants, I hope the sky could be the limit for later. So these are new, new areas for study. Business opportunities include training of the youth in beta oil, tree industry transplant production, training our youth in compost production and the, the value chain activities, packaging of purpose, training of technicians to perform regulatory services. These are all areas where we need the youth and companies to help. So I in conclusion, I've been able to demonstrate that organic waste from different resources has been successfully or can be successfully recycled to usable forms for crop production. And recycling of organic fraction of the waste generated will reduce the organic load which we are currently facing in the country, reduce the disease incidence, and promote a healthy environment. I've also been able to show that there's a new way of raising plant materials using organic waste blocks, that is a compost based solid media for tree crops like cocoa and oil palm. We have some of the samples um, in, front of, in front of the uh, uh, entrance and when we go back you can just take one and you can see the weightless nature of the seedlings. So all these things and also the planting surface. So young guys can create their own companies, create websites, take orders and supply. So I hope we may not have this uh, unemployed graduates <laughs> association. The good news is that we can also produce compost and sell to our neighboring Sahelian countries, Burkina Faso, Niger, and what have you. So 
the size that means we want to help induce you to know what we can do. We shouldn't import tomato from every country because there is we have more better resources in doing a lot of things by the focus and the passion and the attitude that are lacking. So new opportunities for developing several business have been made like hopeful sales, enrichment with inorganic fertilizers where necessary, or enrichment with uh, high nutrient content of compost, training of our technicians for sanitization, regulatory, and most importantly, when we are developing businesses, we need to discuss with them companies that manufacture the equipment that will be related to the industry. Most often, we go our own trajectory. When it comes to multiplication or promotion or product of life practices, because we didn't go along with the manufacturing sector, it becomes a bottom. So I will encourage the youth to form teams Whatever business you want to develop, four teams, get people from the various sectors so that you can move along. Don't go alone. Four teams of the relevant sectors, bring in your economic friend, economic student, the financial manager, the mechanical engineer, the agronomist, the agri economist, and four teams. So that before you graduate, you know your strength and weaknesses. Don't go out there before you figure out what to do. So I will urge you to form teams now, discuss the way forward, and you can contact any of the senior members for guidance. So I also suggest that the government should also engage the composed business community, as it's been done in the UK and China. In China, if you want to establish a compost business, you are given a lot of subsidies. Because it's a shared responsibility. It's not due to the compost alone, but it's sanitation related. So as you buy the compost or use the compost, you are improved upon the environment. So Mr. Chairman, these are areas where our young guys can go. So, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to acknowledge the team that we've worked with so far, especially Dr. Noadante, who is in Table, Switzerland. He was a pioneer composed guy. I supervised him for the BSc, Masters, and PhD. So, he's a pioneer student. Then Dr. Jonathan Hogan is the senior lecturer also in environmental science at the University. Then Mr. and Mrs. Nati, who are in the IBI, the National Waste Management Institute at the Yekora. Then the initiator, the guy who are initiated the Pantin Saka Development, Mr. Hokuma and Mr. Penny. I also want to acknowledge the contribution I received from the staff at Poprec, the special doctor at Mamita, Mr. Nana Udru Ose Gonsu, Mr. Men Sansor from India and the rest. I also like to acknowledge the management at Bob and Top, Mr. Matikwale, Abala and Beligansa. I cherish their advice and encouragement. And also to the staff at UB, International Waste Management Institute, who have been with funding for students' research. Also, discussion of Accra purpose and recycling. Very, very, very instrumental in management of waste in Ghana. Whom I'm very, very much indebted to. The Cora Ventures. They are also having one of our students. 
and to Mrs. Norte for helping develop the slides, and also the Dean of the School of Agriculture, Professor Sapon, for giving me the encouragement, suggestions. We have been discussing this composition since the last 15 years. Yes, you see how harsh drives. We started this composition. He will be advised to look at this thing, have you done this thing? So through our interaction, I'm now not a prop scientist, but I'm fairly whole. I look at things in a more holistic approach. And lastly, to my wife and children for the encouragement and the patience during all these trying years. So gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention. I believe we've all been educated on how we can turn organic waste into wealth in agricultural production in Ghana. We wish to express our profound gratitude to Professor Godfrey Ofosugudu for the insightful lecture and for being adept at responding to the questions. Please, let's give him another round of applause. Thank you, Prof. I shall now invite the chairman for his closing remarks. Right. Thank you, Mr. Pedro. I will not talk much. I think that we all have been, been treated to what I will call a live demonstration that waste can be money. Waste is business. But when you look about replicating the, the larger scale, the point that you made is still very valid. That individually, we can be composing, we can be making compost in our homes from some of the waste for your flower pots, your garden, and all that. Some of these that all that we need is to learn the technique, and then let the larger ones be able to solve the bigger problems of can say and all that. You know, remember when we were kids, we had the Ubishi Pidia soft. All homes, backyards had farms, one way or the other. Let us also learn to use our hands to do some of these things in small scale. All that we need to do is to talk the technique and do it well. But we have all been treated to a very educative, interesting uh, lecture. And I will just encourage all of us that uh, these lectures have seemed to be very, very educative, interesting. And that we shouldn't just stay back any time we have notices of such lectures. When I came and sat earlier, I was getting concerned I was saying, what are the guys coming? When are they coming? But I'm quite happy to see quite a thorough uh, auditorium. Thank you for coming. Next time, I hope that you see the call equally. Thank you for the presentation.